Good morning, welcome to St Wilfrid's in Pretoria this Friday, the 4th of March. And we will be saying morning prayer from the Anglican Prayer Book, and you'll find it on page 42. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. We have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence. To offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins, and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. The goodness of God leads to repentance, so let us worship and praise him. Lord, open our lips, that we may glorify and praise your name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. O oh, come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great king and a great, a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it. His hands moulded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God and we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. We go now into a time of penitence as we call to mind and then confess our sins. We confess together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Psalms set for today are Psalms 15 and 16, and they can be found on page 619 of the Anglican Prayer Book. Page 619, Psalms 15 and 16. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Or who may dwell upon your holy hill? He that leads an uncorrupt life and does the thing which is right, who speaks the truth from his heart and has, has not slandered with his tongue. He that has done no evil to his fellow, nor vented abuse against his neighbor, in whose eyes the work, worthless have no honour, but he makes much of those that fear the Lord. <coughs> he that has sworn to his neighbour and will not go back on his oath, he that has put his, not put his money in usury, nor taken a bribe against the innocent, he that does these things shall never be overthrown.
Preserve me, O God. In you have I taken refuge. I have said to the Lord, You are my Lord, and all my good depends on you. As for those who are held holy on the earth, the other gods in whom men delight, though idols may are many that men run after, their offerings of blood I will not offer, nor take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my appointed portion and my cup. You hold my lot in your hands. The share that has fallen to me is in pleasant places, and a fair land is my possession. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. At night also he has instructed my heart. I have set the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand, and I shall not fall. Therefore my heart is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My flesh also shall rest secure. For you will not give me over to the power of death, nor suffer your faithful one to see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy, and from your right hand flow delights for evermore. Our first scripture reading is taken from the book. The first lesson is written in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 18 verses 1 to 4 and then 25 to 32. The Lord spoke to me and said, what is this proverb people keep repeating in the land of Israel? The parents are the sour grapes, but the children got the sour taste. As surely as I am the living God, said the sovereign Lord, you will not repeat this proverb in Israel anymore. The life of every person belongs to me. The life of the parent as well as that of the child. The person who sins is the one who will die. But you say what the Lord does isn't right. Listen to me, you Israelites. Do you think my way of doing things isn't right? Is it your way? It is your way that isn't right. When a righteous person stops doing good and starts doing evil and then dies, he dies because of the evil he has done. When someone evil stops sinning and does what is right and good, he saves his life. He realizes what he's doing and stops sinning. So he will certainly not die but go on living. And you Israelites say, what the Lord does isn't right. You think my way isn't right, do you? It is your way that isn't right. <clears throat> now I, the Sovereign Lord, am telling you, Israelites, that I will judge each of you by what you have done. Turn away from all the evil you are doing and don't let your sin destroy you. Give up all the evil you have been doing and get yourselves new minds and hearts. Why did you Israelites want to die? I do not want anyone to die, says the Sovereign Lord. Turn away from your sins and live. Here ends the first lesson. Now we say the Song of Zechariah on page 46. Blessed be, the God of Is <clears throat> Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. 
He promised to show mercy to our forebears and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the... Oh. And now we, this, we read the second lesson, which is written in Paul's letter to the Philippians. Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 to 9. So then, my brothers and sisters, how dear you are to me, and how I miss you. How happy you make me, and how proud I am of you. This then, dear brothers and sisters, is how you should stand firm in your life in the Lord. Yodia and Santishi, please, I beg you, try to agree as sisters in the Lord. And you too, my faithful partner, I want you to help these women, for they have worked hard with me to spread the gospel, together with Clement and all my other fellow workers whose names are in God's Book of the Living. May you always be joyful in your union with the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Show a gentle attitude towards everyone. The Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything, but in all your prayers, ask God for what you need, always asking him with a thankful heart. And God's peace, which is be far beyond human understanding, will keep your hearts and minds safe in union with Christ Jesus. In conclusion, my brothers and sisters, fill your mind with those things that are good, and that deserve praise, things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, and honorable. Put into practice what you learned and received from me, both from my words and from my actions. And the God who gives us peace will be with you. Here ends the second lesson. We say the Song of the Church on page 47 of the Anglican Prayer Book. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded. Your true and only Son, worthy of worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide, you, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. We say the Apostles' Creed at the bottom of page 
48. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be acceptable to you, Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. After beginning this passage by commending the congregation at Philippi with the words, how dear you are to me, how I miss you, how happy you make me and how proud I am of you, Paul turns to another issue. He uses the word koinonia, which is translated as fellowship, but is actually much deeper than what we know as fellowship. Siamese twins born in the ancient world were said to have koinonia in blood, for if one died, the other would die too. In the same way, our Christian fellowship is to be of that quality. What happens to one will happen to the other. The koinonia of the church at Philippi was being affected by two women, Euodia and Sintisha. They had worked with Paul, but their disagreements were causing problems and disunity. It was the kind of disunity when people become proud, more concerned about themselves than about each other. Paul had to say, when each of you cares more for others' interests than your own, you will be united. Alas, problems causing disagreement, infighting and disunity are not uncommon in churches and create an atmosphere that can easily be picked up and drives people away from the church and tragically often away from Christianity. It is something we need to guard against within our congregations and most certainly in our own behaviour. And so let us end with the prayer attributed to St Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there's hatred, let us sow your love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. 
For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Let us pray. Blessed Lord God, we ask you to give us your blessing to all Christian communities, holiness and unity. To your world, the peace you desire for it. To our nation, justice, reconciliation, compassion and freedom from violence and crime to all people everywhere, knowledge of and respect for your law. Keep safe our families, our friends, and those who depend on us. Protect the weak, the vulnerable, the aged, and the little children, and those easily hurt or misled. Heal the sick, especially those in great pain, and those who have no hope of recovery. Sustain with your strength and inspire with your love all who care for the sick, the dying and the bereaved. Comfort those who are dying and those who grieve and bring us all to a joyful resurrection. We ask these things through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty and holy God, your son, in obedience to the Spirit, fasted 40 days in the desert. Give us grace to discipline ourselves, that we may press on towards Easter with eager faith and love through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we may trust in your defence and not fear the power of any adversaries through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us safely to the beginning of another day. Defend us by your mighty power that we may be kept free from all sin and safe from every danger and enable us this day to do only what is right in your eyes through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of all power, we acclaim you. Lord of all grace, we worship you. We are not worthy of you, yet your goodness makes us praise you and give you thanks. We pray you for the life you have given us and for all the blessings we have received at your hand. Above all, we give you thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the grace and hope which his death and resurrection have brought to us. We ask this of you, our Father, that we may never forget your goodness to us, and that we may show our thankfulness not only in words, but by the service of our lives, both now and in all eternity. Heavenly Father, your Son has promised that whenever we pray in his name, you will hear us. Answer our prayers, as may be best for us, granting us in this world the knowledge of your truth, and in the world to come, the fullness of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. May the Lord bless us and watch over us. May the Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look kindly on us and give us peace.